Good evening, everybody. Can everybody let me know if my audio is okay? I have to do a couple things here before we get started. And it's good to see so many of you here. Thank you for being here. Um, it's been a quieter day today in Gannon's case, besides Tisha's extradition hearing. And it looks like she's already on her way back to Colorado, huh? So they wasted no time getting her out of there and getting her sent back to Colorado to begin the process of her hearings that she'll have and everything that will lead up to a trial or whatever is going to happen in this case. Hopefully they get her to talk um, because Gannon still needs to be found. Still needs to be found and you know, it's just, it's sad. Very sad, but you all know that. You all know that. Give me just a couple more minutes, I promise. I'm just working on something here in the background. Okay. So, how is everybody doing tonight? Let's see who's here. Hey, Doodlebug. Hey, Shannon. Aw, Angie Montgomery, I love you. Hi. Hey, Glowing Ember. Hey, Tony. Aw, Tony's part of our Real Massacre Talk team. Carly, Ari, good to see you. So many familiar faces. Hey, Golden One. Hey, Tisha Renee and Glowing Ember. Looks like you guys have been busy in the chat, huh? Hey, Tracy L. Hi, D and Ann Mata. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Becca. Let's see. Hi, China Cat Sunflower. Hey, Raquel. I think, uh, let's see if True Helper stops in. Hey, Tracy L. Um, I might have already told you hi. I don't remember. I'm scrolling backwards. So I'm sorry. My kids are brats. Hey. Aww. Thanks, Tony, for letting me know. Thanks, Donnie Color. Thank you, Angie. Hey, Aquarian baby. Star Angel, hi. All right. So, I have a lot to say. Can you imagine that? I have a lot to say. I'm probably going to reiterate some old things, go over a couple things. Um, I do hate soul for music. I do actually want to watch Tisha's interview video again because um, Amanda, what you can do is share the link. Click share on the live underneath um, 
YouTube, like there should be a share arrow, click that and then click copy link and send it to them. If you can't figure it out, I can send you the link in Messenger. Just let me know. So I wasn't really sure where to begin tonight, but I think I'm going to go ahead and start with this. Words are extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And at times, words can become abusive. And a lot of times, they cause great harm. Considering one of the charges against Letitia's stock are charges of child abuse resulting in the death of a child, I personally challenge everyone to be more aware of abuse. And I know there are so many kind souls in my chat, and I don't doubt that you are all aware of abuse and you watch for signs of abuse. But I really think that it's important for all of us to maybe, when we see things that we question, like, oh, that just doesn't seem right, or somebody seems abusive in their approach, no matter who it is, I, I think it's always a great thing to observe and pay attention to people in their mannerisms and their behavior because abuse is real. And we all witness a form of manipulative abuse of words with the audio video that Tisha posted of Gannon. Now, if we all ask ourselves, if we've ever witnessed abuse by words outside of the video of Gannon, I think many people in this chat could probably say that they have. Of course, that's just my opinion. Um, I oftentimes do have opinions because I'm human. And if I didn't have op opinions, that would probably make me more like a robot. And I refuse to be that way. I am a person that has opinions, that has a heart, and I will voice my opinion when I feel strongly about it. Yes, Tracy L., if it looks wrong, say something. If it sounds wrong, say something. Um, it, it's, it's so important that we hold people who use different forms of abuse as a tool of control. And it, it, I'm just, just in general, it's a generalized statement um, because I personally have witnessed verbal abuse myself. And I know, oops, sorry for the Huskies. We're just going to consider them part of the, the stream from now on. I'm going to start saying, hey, it's me with my two Huskies. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is words and actions can be detrimental, sometimes more det detrimental than other instances, such as Gannon, who lost his pre precious life at the hands of an abuser. Other times, words and actions of abuse can forever alter the psyche of another person and or permanently impact a person's life. Sometimes they might just ruin a person's day or a person's night. They might make a person question themselves. They might make a person go back and rethink, you know, well, did I do something wrong? What did I do? What did I do? You know, but don't, don't let that happen. Don't let, and if you're ever a victim of it, please don't ever question yourself because I've questioned myself when I've been been the target of other people's abuse in different aspects of my life. I've watched one of my friends recently be the target of somebody's abuse. And let me tell you, I don't defend myself a lot, but when it comes to a couple different instances, when it comes to children, I will defend children to no end, and I will defend the people that I love to no end. So, um, good for you, Tracy. I'm glad that you got out. I'm glad that you got out because it is it is real. It is real, and it's 
it, it's, I just think that it's important that if anything, if anything from Gannon's case, Gannon is dead. He is gone at the hands of an abuser. And abuse comes in many forms. And I just really hope and pray that we can all be a little bit more aware of people who sometimes are disguised as good people. Sometimes they come disguised as family and friends. Sometimes they just come disguised as coworkers. Sometimes they just come disguised as the nice neighbor next door. But it, it's so important to have your eyes open to those type of people and stand up for what's right. I'm a big believer of being kind and a big believer that reacting out of anger is unhealthy and alarming. Those are, are things that I truly believe that Letitia did. Again, that's an opinion. I don't know that as fact. I don't think anybody knows as fact right now how she reacted when it came to Gannon, but that's that's definitely what I believe. Um, but the end of the day, hurting anybody in this world is uncalled for. It's not okay. It's not acceptable. Maybe I'm a dreamer, but I pray and hope this can be a message that may impact just one person. Gannon, unfortunately, cannot be given life again. He is forever gone. But for all the other children and even adults who are victims of abuse in any sense, whether it's verbal, emotional, or physical abuse, may we all bring awareness and may this channel help bring awareness to that, those types of situations and those types of people. It's not only our duty to protect our own children, but it is our duty to protect all children, every one of them. And I will always, always have a strong opinion when it comes to somebody that's throwing red flags all over the place. A, a person who paints her own narrative and told us a story over several weeks where we were able to piece together bits and pieces of facts, facts, not speculation, facts. We were able to piece those together. And here we are today. Here we are today. So um, awareness and accountability can move mountains. When you stand behind what you say and you use those two principles in your everyday life. With that being said, I want to further say that I have never, ever, ever taken the easy way out in any aspect of my life. And that applies to research and to true crime investigating. I've paid money lots of money to do a lot of research. And I'm not saying that for any recognition. I just want people to know where I come from. There's been countless hours and time invested into this channel and into the Real Massacre Talk team. Countless. At the end of the day, I am a human being. I have opinions. I have feelings. I have thoughts. And I have perspective. But most of all, I'm probably over compassionate and sometimes that compassion is given to the wrong people. I will never publicly degrade someone and that is a major factor in why this channel will never allow another creator to be bashed, nor will we allow people to bash creators in the comments None of that. We don't do that here. And if people want to do that to me, that's fine. That's on you. That's not me. That's not on me. I'm going to sleep tonight with a true with a clean conscience. I know that I poured my heart and my soul into this case 
taking away from my own family in order to bring facts and truth. Sometimes, and actually a lot of the time, I presented facts and truth to you guys as opinion because I couldn't tell people that they were facts and truth because of different aspects, considering um, there are members on my team that have direct contact with different investigating agencies. There are members on my team who have searched high and low for Gannon in real time, in real time. So I'm going to come back to that. Um, the, the thing is, is that everything I presented here, and I want to give True Helper a huge shout out because he's also helped me research. He's helped me with a lot of things and he is a professional. Um, everything that I have presented here has been based on two things. Information that Tisha Stock presented to us herself and information that my research team and the Real Massacre Talk team uncovered and or information that people brought to us that was verified and vetted. So to question my integrity, it doesn't offend me because I know the truth. I know where the facts came from. And that's where I stand today. Um, but I think what I want to be clear about is that because I am not just one person, I'm one voice that you hear, I have a team standing behind me. Some of these people hold government and official credentials in different fields. None of you are obligated to trust my opinions and I won't attack you for not doing so. I completely get that. One of my mottos that I say, and I often say it to my team, our team, is that I don't trust anybody's hearsay but my own, but our own, because we know that we vet our facts, we vet the truth, we vet the things that we say, and I might not come out and say to you guys, hey, this is what it is, but I'll definitely tell you this is my opinion, or I will present it as an opinion. So all I ask is that if you don't respect what you consider to be opinions, is that you do it respectfully, and please don't callously or irresponsibly pass judgment on my opinions. I'm an open book. My Facebook Messenger is open to any of you. You're welcome to message me at any time. I'm always available. Shannon can tell you that. Doodlebug can tell you that. Mignon can tell you that. Um, Tony can tell you that. Angie Montgomery can tell you that. They can all tell you. True Helper. They, everybody can tell you I'm very accessible. It's okay if you don't agree with me. It's okay. Um, but when you pass judgment on the things that I say, which is your right, I ask that you do so respectfully because you're not just insulting me. You are insulting a team of professionals that stand behind me and stand be with me. And all of them are very intelligent people. All of them. I just, uh, you know, we, we dedicate hours upon hours of searching for answers and for truth. And I think it's really hard for me to know that one of my team members who has searched for Gannon is now going to be going back out to search for Gannon's the lifeless body. 
So please, if you want to question my integrity or my opinions, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know how to get a hold of me, but do not publicly slander me. Do not publicly shame me. And do not call yourself my friend if you're going to do so. Um, let me read some of your comments. Oh, I'm not, I'm not really, I, I just want everybody to know, you know, um, Hey, honeybee. I just want everybody to know there were a lot of things that during this investigation, I, I could not say because I wasn't going to be the one to put it out there on YouTube. I wasn't going to be the one. Th that's not my place. Oh my gosh, Carly. Thank you so much. Um, Wow, thank you. I There's a thin line between when you have a YouTube channel and you cover cases and there's an active police investigation. There is a thin line in being able to say things that you know for fact or maybe present them as things that you know as opinion. You know, I'll take the heat for that. That's fine. That's fine. I'd much rather say I have an opinion on something than say I know a fact and interfere with something. I don't regret how I covered this case one bit. I have zero regrets. None. None whatsoever. Because I had facts standing behind the things that I said. I had research standing behind the things that I said. I'm just, I don't know. This is all, it's just all very sad. There's so many sad things. So many sad things that this case has brought. Oh my gosh, Tisha, thank you. Thank you. Darwin, um, how do they know Gannon is gone without a body? Well, based on Tisha's statements alone about blood being found in various locations around the house and one of those locate or one of those blood droppings or remnants, I don't know if it was cleaned or not, but um, was the size of a saucer. I would imagine that different evidence that was collected in the searches, along with the evidence that was collected from the house. Um, brought them to that co conclusion. If you were to look at the case of Jennifer Dulos and Fo Fotis Dulos, who just recently committed suicide because he was being charged for his wife's murder without a body yet being found, they determined that she was dead because the amount of blood that they found in the house meant that whatever happened to her, the injuries would have been detrimental you know, detrimental. She would have been dead from those injuries. So investigators use a lot of techniques and I, you know, right now they're quiet about searches, but I do know they will be searching for Gannon's body. They will bring Gannon home. They will. They will. Um, Oh my gosh, Raquel, thank you. Um, this case has literally, it sucked the life out of me and it's hit me in a different way than other cases have. It truly has. It's been, 
It's been a hard one to cover. Yes, Becca, that's true. That's true. There, I mean, the how the house is part of the crime scene. Um, yeah, Angie, it's oh, Carly, you're sweet. Um, yeah, there there was enough evidence recovered to to prove death. And I, you know, I just, this, this, is it's just been a, a horrible case to cover. It has, because I know a lot of people like to compare T's interview to Shane Carey's interview. And it's hard for me. I don't get upset about it, but there's a huge difference there. Yeah, Shannon's can be very difficult to hear. There's a huge difference between Shane's interview and Tisha Stauk. Shane gave one long interview and then a shorter interview, okay? Tisha gave a very, very, very poor interview. And then she proceeded to go and paint a picture over the coming weeks after Gannon's disappearance. She told stories. Tisha was never judged solely on one thing. She was never judged on just the, the video of the truck backing into the driveway. You know, if... I, I know a lot of you have listened to every live stream and I am so thankful for that. So thankful that you, so a lot of you remember the things that I said or the things that we've discussed. And I think it was last week. Uh, the, the days are kind of blending together, but um, last week, I believe it was an ABC news article that said that ABC News reached out to detectives and detectives did not, di said that they did not disagree with Roderick Drayton's description of the surveillance video, nor did they disagree with what was said about the, um, Sorry, my, my son just scared me. Oh, um, nor did they disagree about what Roderick said about what was seen on the surveillance footage. So um, Tisha was not just that one little piece of surveillance footage of her leaving with Gannon and coming back without Gannon was not the one sole piece of th piece of evidence per se that everybody based their opinions in quotes on there was a mountain of things a mountain of things hey joe do you remember um how many names we've came up with to date or maybe uh alexis or anybody's in the facebook group i i forgot to count the number of names in aliases that we've came up to date for on Tisha. Is it like six or seven different aliases that she has and like six or seven different birthdays? Yes, Angie, it is very later layered. It was at seven star. Yeah. Oh, was it 10? Okay. The last I looked, I think we, we thought we were at six or seven and we're trying to, I'm doing my best guys. I, I have a couple uh, things out right now trying to get the best background report I can get on this woman. Um, I will not state this as fact because I don't know if this is a fact or not, but I do think that there is a strong possibility a very strong possibility that we are going to find out a lot more about Tisha than anybody ever realized, starting with her multiple aliases. Um, 
uh, it's, I mean, we're talking, she goes by Tisha Taylor Harden, Tisha Lynn Harden, um, Letitia Sampson, Letitia Stouk. The Leanne, the Leanne middle name was the most recent name released today. Um, Soul for Music, yeah, something's going to come out. Oh, my gosh, Texas Diamond. Thank you. You guys are going to make me cry. Um, yeah, Joe, I think her, I think that this is, this is solely speculation. We're allowed to do that on the internet too, by the way, because we're people, we're allowed to speculate. Um, The skeletons that are going to fall out of this closet, I, I do believe are going to be deep. I do believe they are going to be deep. Just from what our team has uncovered, you guys, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Um, wow. I mean, and I can't even come to you and say this is all I know about her yet because we're still piecing it together. It's a mess. Her history. Thank you, Lufa. I love you too. Aw, Dawn. Thank you. Um, Tisha's history is an absolute disaster. You're right, Soul for Music. And, you know, without speculation, there wouldn't be places such as Web Sleuths. That is a very, very well-ran forum, forum. And, you know, you're allowed to speculate on there. So, oh, thank you, Matt. Yes, Joe, we are still digging. <clears throat> we are still digging. So, I want to play her interview again because I honestly haven't watched it. And the last time I watched it on here, I think we were all very distracted. And I'd like to give it the proper attention that it really deserves, if that's okay with you guys. Do you mind if I play, play her interview again? Because I think the more, I think we're able to maybe hear some more out of that interview. Yes, thank you all so, for being so supportive. Two more times, play it, Carly. Okay. Um, all right, we'll play it. Let me get it pulled up here. I want to watch it because I know the last time that we played it, there was some distraction, and I... Uh, when I give it, I, I mean, I've probably watched it like a hundred times. I have not watched it since she's been arrested, but I think there's a lot said there. And I think all of, I, I think a lot of people would agree. I do think a lot of people would agree that, oh my gosh, Stephanie, thank you so much. You guys are so kind. Thank you. Um, you're right, Irish. Speculation is literally a part of the investigative process. And you know what's crazy? If anybody can believe this, investigators speculate. Did you know that? They speculate when they're investigating. And then there's that whole th thing of circumstantial evidence. A lot of people have been convicted on circumstantial evidence and no physical evidence. Where do you think circumstantial evidence comes from? So it's interesting, interesting. Yeah, CG. It, yes, they do. And they theorize. Yes, they do. That is what makes a good investigator. And the difference is between an investigative team and, say, what we do is 
investigators and law enforcement, they keep things close to their vest because they have to. They are upholding a legal duty. And my son's alarm clock is going off at 7.35 at night. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> um, they have that duty because they are doing their job and they are serving their county and their state that they live in. We don't have that duty as everyday citizens because we're not working for a law enforcement agency. What was that, Ari? Not to move off Gannon, but are you going to? What do you mean? I'm with you, Amanda. Ari, unfortunately, yes, we will we will always be covering new cases. We will. We will. We've covered many cases. Um I think I have shared with you guys in the past, a lot of our stuff was pre-recorded and I, I didn't often do lives. We did lives in the past, not often. Um, but, you know, I finally found a confidence to come on here and do lives as well as being so invested in Gannon's case, so invested in Gannon's case and and I say, unfortunately, we will cover more cases. And I say, unfortunately, because that means, unfortunately, there's going to be more bad things that happen in this world. And that's very, very sad to me. I, I hate to see all the terrible things that happen in this world. But I am going to play this video of her. Let me just get it. Yeah, Shannon, she does. She owes everyone an apology. That I said that in my statement that I read last week. And I might read that again tonight because I don't think she can hear it now. But, oh, Hurricane Holly. Oh, okay. I promise I'm getting to the video. You're right, Matt. You're right. Oh, thank you, China Cat. Hey, Danette. Ari, if you are in our Facebook group, if you join our Facebook group, that's the easiest way to find me on Facebook. Um, or you can email me and I'll drop you the email link and I will send you a link to my Facebook so that you can message me there or you can message me on email. I think I got it. Okay. I think, okay. I got to get this video pulled up. I keep promising it to you guys and I'm so thankful for such a kind chat. You guys are all so kind and just uplifting. I know, isn't this picture amazing? Isn't it amazing? I really love this picture. It's beautiful. Yes, true helper. S-A-E. Gen, Gen X, Shannon, and Car Guy 72 Joe are awesome. They're amazing people, both of them. Okay. So, video, right? That's what we want. Let me get it here.
And if you guys can't hear the video, let me know right away. I'm also going to be to just different abuse hot oh, different abuse hotlines um because I do think that's something that we should promote is you know the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is one because they helped with Gannon's case but there is an abuse abuse hotline for children and there is an abuse hotline offer from any type of domestic abuse or emotional abuse from any person so I'm going to get those links dropped because I think it's important that we encourage that for people. All right, I got to pull this down. And I got to do share screen again. Oh, Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you. That's it. Okay, I'll stop that. I hit the wrong button. Is that it? No, that is not it. Why is it not pulling up my video? Hmm. All right, I think I can do it like this. I just have to double check and make sure in a second that you're seeing the right screen. Okay, you got the right screen. Give me just one second because I need to get my face off of there so you get the full screen. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh, you've been a part of I, I the presentation for a time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Uh, what, what did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations, like the things that have been said that I've disappeared from the community. I haven't been there to help, but there's lots of 
the right. reasons death behind that. Right, death threats are one of them. My family's uh, getting lots of death threats. threats. We right. counted every right. 20 death threats are one of them. Already. My family's getting lots of death threats. We two, counted every 20 some death threats already. Um, so two, my husband's ex-wife is living in our home. And of course, I'm not coming to things in the help with the family when I was kind of like told I couldn't. And then many other things that happen with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and then during the investigation, I was told I wasn't complaining. And can I elaborate on that? Yes. So I asked for an attorney during the interview, uh, and I was denied that by them. I was held because they were blocking the door, and I was told I couldn't leave. And that if I would have touched them, they would have probably, you know, said I still wasn't complying or said I was, you know, trying to run away or something. But during the interview, I asked several times, could I get an attorney? Could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? I was denied. I was told I couldn't drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I mean, it's continuously drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. That my I mean, it's rights continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. They, and that's why you say that. That's they why they said I wasn't cooperating at that time. Correct. You were. Why did you ask for attorney? That's why you did that time. Correct. Well, I asked and for attorney this time because there was one. Well, I asked for attorney this time because there was one individual. There was two really good detectives, and so, you know, really detectives. Detectives. And so I'm not, you know, going to talk they bad about the detectives. But the detectives. They started to they get when I would answer to questions. They tried to you know, throw the detectives. Was, there's always a twist. The main goal, main goal is, is to find it. During that time, some of the way they, they were saying it, it felt like you were totally right. Hold on one second. It's... Try muting myself. Yeah, that might be it. Okay. You're probably right, so let me see. Let me know if that works, if I mute myself, okay? You are. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh. You've been a part of the investigation since the very first time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what What did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations, like the things that have been said that I have disappeared from the community i haven't been there to help but there's lots of reasons behind that uh reasons like death threats right right death threats are one of them my family's getting lots of death threats we counted over 20 some death threats already um two my husband's ex-wife is living in our home and of course i'm not coming home to do these things and to help with the family when i was kind of like told i couldn't um, and then many other things that happened with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and then during the investigation, I was told I wasn't complying. And can I elaborate on that? Please do. Yes. So I asked for an attorney during the interview uh, and I was denied that by them. I would have blocking the door and I was told I couldn't leave. And that if I would have touched them, they would have probably, you know, said I still wasn't complying or said I was, you know, trying to run away or something. But during the interview, I asked several times, could I stop the interview? Could I get an could I get an attorney? I was denied. I was told I couldn't get nothing to drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I mean, it was continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. And that's why you say that they said then you weren't cooperating with the investigation. That's right at that time, correct. And why did you ask for an attorney at this time? Well, I asked for an attorney at the time because there was one individual, there was two really good detectives. And so I'm not, you know, going to talk bad about detectives, but the tactics they started to get when I would try to you know, they're detectives, they're supposed to twist. The one main goal is to find Gannon. But during that time, some of those things made me feel uncomfortable the way they were saying things. So I immediately stopped and felt like, felt like an attorney would help me with some of the vocabulary and things like that that I needed help with and understanding some of the things that they were asking. I'm going to shift gears to what has become a huge online presence of people right. obviously trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. to help find Gannon. But at the same time, sometimes it just feels like we're monitoring have you seen any of those comments yourself? We have. And see, that's one of the main things we haven't uh, been around in the public eye because we, I didn't want to expose my family to it if all these things were going on. You know, there was comments about Gannon getting pushed off 
the hike and there's comments about this and that's just not true. I took care of Gannon for the last two years in our home because his mother didn't want to do it. And I would never, never, ever hurt this child. And I know there's some questions out there about, okay, so tell me what happens. That's up to the investigations when they end up letting you guys know, but I've cooperated with them, even to the point that we were held with a gun. And my daughter, a 17 year old who serves our country in the United States Air Force, who has never committed a crime or done anything wrong in her life, was put in handcuffs over the keys that was in her purse so they could take her car. And they weren't in there. They weren't even in her car. I mean, in her purse. And they you, were in my pocket. You originally didn't even know it was the uh, law enforcement officer? I didn't know it was a law enforcement officer because when he came out, I guess he was putting his jacket on and it, it wasn't necessarily his fault. He was adjusting and happened to catch me. But I saw the gun and I panicked originally and kind of thought, oh gosh, I got the, like, who's this guy? And then once I realized it was a sheriff's office, I was totally okay, but they still had a gun and told me they were going to shoot me. But I was really concerned about my daughter asking why she was being detained in handcuffs and things like that, when that shouldn't even happen for a child. That shouldn't happen for someone who was standing inside of a store shopping because we couldn't have any clothes because all of our clothes were here. We came here and got clothes, you know, we would be harassed. So she went to purchase some underwear and things like that and was putting the handcuffs in the store, you know, and then brought out with men with guns. And there's, that, that's just not okay. You know, they could have approached me and said, hi, I'm with El Paso County. Can I please get this instead of the way that it happened? I'm just going to check your chat. You're doing great. Still going to recording, still can hear you okay. Okay, yeah, sounds like we're good. Everyone's following my mic. I'll give out. I want to make sure that's not going to happen here. Okay. I, I should try and clarify here. Not necessarily crime rates, but the way that people are reacting online to rumors about you with the service. Oh, oh yes. Wow. The rumors have gotten so bad. Um, I pretty much have been told at least 10 different ways that these people have these conspiracy theories. I guess they watch a lot of law shows and maybe they have all these theories on how um, Gannon is dead. And that's what they're saying. So I'm like, why are you saying Gannon is dead? He is not dead. We are going to find Gannon. And that's the main goal that we all have. My family has. Just because you haven't seen us, we have that same goal. We've been out searching. My aunt has been out searching. My family has been out searching. We all have been doing that together so that we could protect each other. How does it feel when not only you have a lost child who you are in care of, but then people blaming you for that child? You know, I, I'm just ready for Gannon to come home. Most importantly for him to see his family. But second, I am ecstatic when I'm able to say to people that I hope they have a really sincere apology for all these theories that have came out online, for all the things they said that I have done or people have done. I just want everyone to know that we're going to find Gannon. And I love him so much. I've helped taking care of him for so long. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. Gannon is so kind and he loves to play video games that's one of his favorite things he loves sonic and mario and you know he's always helpful and I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house and we have two little cute dogs and he was always like a person that i could say gannon can you go do this and he would do it right away you know sometimes with kids we have to remind them and things like that and that's okay but he was so sweet and able to help anyone. He could notice when you're sick and say, are you okay? And such a kind heart. Um, I know you just said that you can't say anything about the investigation. So you can just say, so again, if you can't answer this, but is there anything we can hear about the hike? Was there a hike? We don't, that just seems like we're in right now. You know what? Um, could we bring a, my daughter up here? Cause she can, she can go and say that you know, she came home from work after the hike and she can verify that Gannon was at our home. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. And if she doesn't want to, that's okay, but you're allowed to. That's fine. Sound okay so far? Yes. I need Harley. I need Harley.
because they want you to verify what's getting at home after the hike. Because you didn't go to the hike, but you came home from work. Hmm? No, just answer the question. Yes, you, you can verify Gannon was at home. Yeah. I told her she didn't have to be too in-depth because she is still you know, a child, but I want to make sure that someone knows that there's another person to verify that Gannon. Sure. Does she need to hold this? No. Yes, so I came home later that evening. I was at work and I can verify that he was there that night. So there there was a hike that you guys went on, but then you guys, where'd you guys go back to? Garden of the Gods. Oh, okay. Um, I guess when you... And then we ate Burger King afterwards, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, um, and then it just was, I'm going to go to play at a friend's house. And then it was just, uh, I'm off to go to play at a friend's house. Unfortunately, I'm not able to, like, comment on that anymore. And for that reason, is because some things have been turned and twisted. And, you know, that was one of those stories you were talking about where people say things. Um, we had to hear things like who would let their child go out at dark and, and things like that. And that, and that's just why I don't want to answer that. Um, if I had to give, I'm not going to say that part. That's no. okay. Never mind. That's right. I could take that out. I understand that it, it gets tricky with yeah. stuff. Do you feel like I, I ask you what I need to, do you feel like this is going to help kind of turn the tide of what feels like the witch hunt? I hope is am I on camera now? You are okay. Still. Um, I think that a lot of people can see that I'm not missing and see that I am being cooperative. And but to me, it's okay that they think those things because my the way someone thinks about me, I don't have a problem with that. My main thing is I would never want someone to think that I would hurt Gannon or any of the children in our home because that's just not the case. I've spent my whole entire life working so hard in education. Um, there was even things online that was talking about my education license and I, a team, they just didn't move on ability and I didn't finish out my contract license and that. They had nothing to do with activity, any of those things. Do you, know? you feel like these are just internet, they know what they're doing? And you know, here's the thing that kind of saddens me. I want to talk about someone like that and have a witch hunt out for them. Why would you even care like, about doing those things? Because this is... It all ask Gannon or question today about Gannon. It would be ask Leticia. Is. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? We're gonna watch her um arraignment today too. I'm gonna invite True Helper in here if you guys don't mind. I'm sure that's okay with all of you. True Helper, do you want me to email you or just drop the link in the chat? The ending to that video just makes me makes me sick. Let me see if Okay, True Helper, I'm going to email it to you. One second, guys, while I send this email.
What's well, everybody, you know, in the meantime, I don't like to, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because this is my channel. What's everybody's thoughts on Harley? I just want to hear some thoughts because I've read some different things. And to be completely honest, I am not, I don't necessarily feel one way or another. And I don't have any facts that I will state as opinion about that situation. Um, anything that I say regarding Tisha's daughter is, is purely just, you know, brainstorming and thinking out loud, really. You think she told on her mom? That's possible. That is possible. <laughs> I emailed it to you, but I'll drop it in the chat, too. I'm going to get that picture back up as well of Mr. G-Man. Yeah, she actually did fly out to Colorado. That is a fact. She put herself on Tik, was it TikTok? Um, she had herself on TikTok. <laughs> True helper. <laughs> Sorry for texting you. Um, I got to read something here that Becca sent me really quick. I think, though, um, you know, if we if we do discuss Harley, it is responsible that we consider that she is only 17 years old. Um, my opinion. Do I have to keep saying that word? <laughs> my opinion, I shared it the other night just from watching her vlogs. I feared that, you know, she could be a victim of abuse herself. I don't know that. Just just watching her mannerisms and stuff. So while we're waiting for true helper. Yeah, you have to ima imagine, you know, we every person, every everybody, you can witness it all over the place. Um, YouTube is a great example to get a good idea of somebody's character. And I don't ever state my opinions and I never will when it comes to different things I see on YouTube, but it is a good idea, a good way to observe people's character, I guess. And every one of us has a way that we act in front of people and a way that we act in private. Those two do intertwine. So when you see somebody acting inappropriately or aggressively or, um, you know, or if you, you just get a bad feeling or something like that, I don't know how to explain it, but usually usually somebody's public perception or the public perception of what we have of them can be very accurate. And then you, you try to imagine what happened happens behind closed doors because everybody's a, a little bit more free behind closed doors. So I hope so too, honey, honey bee. I, I hope so too. They're moving whose clothes out in plastic bags, Dee Dee.
Yeah, that's a great point, One Wild Ride. She was definitely coached in that video. Definitely coached. Oh, so you guys, I haven't been online in a couple hours. So where's that being shown at? Oh, that's horrible. Horrible. That makes me really sad. I don't want to cry in here tonight. I love True Helper's mood. I love it. He's a... Uh... He's a good person. He's a good person. You're right, Shannon. It needs to be captured on here tonight. Don Jay, you're right. Sometimes the unspoken words are the loudest. Not terrified, just just timid, Mojo. Yeah, and that, that absolutely could be her demeanor. It absolutely could just be her demeanor. I don't know. I just and I, I just saw some warning signs. I don't know. It was like she tiptoed around her own house in that video. I don't know how else in her vlogs. I don't know how else to Ah, oh, moving things out. That is horrible. The crime lab is totally taking over that house, and the family has to take all their things out of the house. Oh, that's sad. All right. Um... Yeah, I personally um, think that Petco was a diversion. Petco was, I, I do think it was a diversion. Yeah, Bernadette, she was whispering in her videos, and I don't know what that that means. And yes, Manda, Texas girl, you are correct. Tisha's ex-husband, the father of her daughter, who is 17 years old, is deceased. I want to say it was 2013 he died. He lived in North Carolina, but he died in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, that that's what... That's horribly sad, Iser Blue. Gannon was abused while his daddy was serving his country. That's just, you know, that brings me back to, and, you know, I, I've seen people speak poorly about Al. I have. And I think that that man has a heavy, heavy, heavy burden to carry the rest of his life because no matter what, he was out of town and he trusted the woman that he married. He was out of town working and doing training for the military and Gannon was in the care of somebody that and Landon trusted and it's just so extremely sad. It's so sad because, you know, grief has many stages. It has many stages no matter how you lose somebody. And one of those stages is blame. You blame yourself. And I fear that Albert is going to, when he hits that stage, he's really going to hit it. And I, I feel really bad for him. My heart goes out to all of them. Yeah, the, you're right, Raquel. They are all essentially victims of her. Every one of them. Uh, 
Um, True Helper, I'm going to drop you another link. And I do have to um, step away for like one minute, you guys. I'm sorry. It's going to be quiet for a second. Maybe I'll, let me see if I can get T's video playing of her arraignment. My oldest son had his wisdom teeth out this morning. So I need to step away for a moment and just go check on him. He's in bed, and I just want to make sure he's feeling okay. I'll true helper be here in just one more minute. In the meantime, I'll get signed in and try to get this video. Um, let me see something. Oh, there's True Helper. Hey there. Hola, mi amiga. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I am good. Good. How are you? Doing outstanding. <laughs> good. Good. So if you need to step um, away for a second, that is fine. I'm just um Yeah, that would be great if you could oh, keep absolutely. the chat entertained for a moment. I just need I just need to check on him and make sure that he doesn't need any like pudding or applesauce or water or any of the above. I know so there, I will mommy, be right back. You, you gotta do you gotta do your thing, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. So handle, yes. handle your business. Hold on. I'll be this. back in one minute, guys. Thank All you. Right. Well, hello, everyone. It is very, very good to be back again. Before I really go over chat, and I promise this time I'm going to do better, I, I really made a commitment to actually try to follow chat at the same time. I honestly, I don't know how Danielle and Amy or most YouTubers do it. I really don't. It really takes a, a good sense of self and multitasking to be able to read chat and still maintain a, a decent podcast. It's, it's, it's amazing, but I'm learning. I'm learning on my feet. That's for sure. And I believe it was Carly P Raquel Adalto. I'm sorry if I butchered that Texas diamond Tisha or Tisha Renee, Stephanie Burke and Kathy Suter. Thank you for those super chats. I know Danielle is more than worth it. And I know she definitely can use that. I know personally how hard she works. And of course, most of you knew long before I did as I'm still the newcomer. But let me see here. I know I've been away for a while. And I was trying to catch up. Get my coffee made. Be able to sit down. Trying to weed through all my dogs at the same time. Yeah. The queen there's laying back on the recliner, and they were running around, of course, causing a mad hatter of sorts. Danielle could tell you I sent her a video earlier, a little mini, uh, it was a one and a half minute clip of my youngest pup and my oldest having at it with one of the blankies I usually keep on the couch so that they don't destroy it. <laughs> oh, hey, KC, me too, the golden one. S A Gen X. Is that how you pronounce that? S A Gen X? Well, I would assume you're a mechanic by trade because a S A, I mean, that just, I don't know. I would assume. I, I might be wrong. Of course. Uh, Danette Costa. Hello. Oh, there's my doodle bug. You are always such a sweetheart to me, as are all of you. And I really can't say it enough about how much I appreciate it. You have put up with my mumbling, my stuttering, and all my 
weird quirks and ins and outs while I've been on. But as most or well, some may know, I really haven't done too many live streams, but I am well trying to get there. So back to chat for a second. Let me check this out here. Let me check this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm. Oh, it's good to see you too, bad bitch. Nice. I like that name. I love that name. <laughs> so I saw the video that Danielle played. Actually, more so, I was listening to it. And isn't it something how all of us now have such a, a greater depth of perception and understanding about what T was really up to? And if you all remember when I was on, I think it was the first live stream. I think this is my fourth now, but whatever it was, my first one when Danielle and Amy had played the video for me, I was looking at her body language. And not that I'm a uh, egotistical type or oh me 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 or taking credit, but I tell you that body language that I saw that first time around was horrific to me. I knew it was obviously very deceptive, and there was a reason why she chose to keep her back to the camera. And as we all now have been brought up to speed, her having up to 10 aliases, it says it all. It says a lot. And I think these were the little things that law enforcement knew for so long, but obviously couldn't release it just for the simple fact of it possibly contaminating or in interfering with their investigation. And again, I know it drives us crazy, but everyone has to give a little bit of props to the police and all the investigators on the ground over that. And, uh, well, I'm speaking on that note. I'd like to give a little bit of a shout out. Um, D Wop, you know, uh, Michael Dalton, there, I believe he went to the press conference and gave a description of all of the people that were actually there, including uh, some of the, the park rangers and uh, some of the military or members of the military. And it was absolutely unbelievable the sheer amount and types of people that he described was. <laughs> Wow, I probably would have walked in and, and immediately been semi intimidated, but awestruck all at the same time, just for the given fact of how big this case has become and how many have contributed and dedicated so much of their lives towards finding this young man. And even though I know all of us have heard the bad news and Lord knows when I was speaking on the phone with Danielle was when she had found out, I mean, it, it was very, very you know, difficult that she, you know, knowing that T had been arrested and, you know, it, it answered Wait, that I got I got to enter Kim Craig. What's going on down there? Oh, so I took my eyes off no. the chat. I'm sorry. Who? Okay, you're sitting in Canada. Watching. We're all just oh. gonna trash T or Harley now. Who? Who's trashing Harley and who's hating? Yeah, who's hating on Harley? I didn't see that. Yeah, cool. I didn't see any hate on Harley. I'm not sure what you're doing, but knock it off. Well said, and I apologize. I missed that again. There's Daniel's no, skills at work. Fine. There's your skills, though. I, I I was reading chat earlier. I was actually semi proud of myself, and then you just came back in and reminded me how much of a dummy I am. Thanks. You're not. No, <laughs> you're not a dummy at all. Yeah, okay, Kim. I'm I, maybe I'm maybe when you ask a question, um, put a question mark behind it because it definitely said so. We're all just going to sit. You're all just going to sit here and trash Harley. That came off as insinuating that we were trashing Harley and nobody is doing that. So I was going to say, I didn't even hear of such a thing. Honestly, I know you haven't spoke that way. No, I, I, no I asked everybody's, I just asked some thoughts because I, you know, I, I actually was sitting here last night thinking about Harley and um, hmm. wondering like who's caring for her. You know, I know she's 17 and she's almost a legal adult. And, you know, I have seen speculation <clears throat> about her, but. Well, I, I mean, honestly, they would uh, before. OK, during the course of a thank normal. Thank you. Doodle Thank you. 
in, in during the course of a normal investigation, if they are going to knowingly pick up a parent of some kind, they will have child protective services lined up to intervene just right. in case if the child is too young. But in her case, being 17, I mean, that's, you know, we're one year away from being a technical legal adult, obviously. But, um, you know, I'm who knows? They might even give her the choice to become emancipated for all we know, or she can might think of it or somebody might suggest it to her. I mean, we just wouldn't know. And I'm sure the courts would probably allow it or, or uh, you know, approve it in a heartbeat. You know, I've only heard of that one time before where a parent was being arrested and the child was 17. And that's what had happened with the young guy at the time. And he did. He 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 uh, got emancipated and then he didn't have to worry about being under the care of, of uh, well, the, the person that was detained. Right. See, Ronnie, right. I didn't say it. I didn't say names, Ronnie. You got to call me later. Get on me. <laughs> but I did say Ooh. your name over the airwaves. Whoops. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's one of my uh, team members. <laughs> gotcha. I warned you. Um, I warned you. I'm in rare mode uh, in a rare form tonight. <laughs> D-A-P-K. Actually, yeah, everybody has a father, um, but hers is dead. Her mm. father died in 2013, I believe. Mm. So it's sad. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. never brought him into this case because he, you know, the case focused on Gannon being missing, and oh. I almost missed that. Huh. Tisha's dead, deceased spouse. Um, didn't really seem to come into play, I guess, you know, I, there is a kind of a testament there to the lifestyle that was lived in the past, possibly between him and T, but I'm not ready to go into that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's something that we just need to sit tight on <laughs> at the moment and just kind of, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, at the end of the day, his death is and him as a person is still, it doesn't really play into Gannon's disappearance and murder, but it may paint a picture of Tisha. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. To some does, extent. You never know. So, I mean, look at the Lori Vallow case right. for crying out loud. Between them two, they've got a right. whole pile of people laying all over the place. So yeah, we can't we can't discount or exclude anything at this point. But I, I agree with what you said as well, though, Daniel. Right now, between the family, obviously, just learning, you know, that Gannon is gone. Man, okay. Sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, God, I still can't. Okay, between them being informed and having to deal with everything that they've been through. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, uh, that would be something obviously the investigators are looking into and oh be sure of that because as they uh, especially be from the district uh, district attorney's office right on down from the prosecutor and everybody that's included they are establishing and building such a rock solid case against her trust that just because she was arrested and they read off that list of charges that will not be the end of it i have no doubts in the least bit on that one because knowing how they operate and then hearing now all this new evidence come forward well i mean it's new to us they obviously already knew but let me tell you something about i know somebody was asking me a question earlier uh oh angie clark had asked me um will you walk us through how the detective put a case together well it's simplistic and complicated all at the same time. But in layman's terms, it's as easy as one, two, three with starting with the simple investigation. Obviously, you start into let's just take missing persons cases. You obviously immediately look at the uh, the immediate family, you know, mother, father, brothers, sisters, uh, cousins, nephew. And then you go to the extended family, excuse me, then cousins, nephews, this, that, the other. Uh, and then, obviously, at the same time, remember, you have uh, just because a detective may be in charge of a case, uh, he has multiple departments that are also involved. And then, likewise, the heads of those departments. But uh, trying to keep it as simple and sweet as possible, 
then at the same time they're doing what they call that broad-based investigation the preliminary investigation into the family and stuff then they're out uh, they're taking in any forms of tech cell phones laptops pcs you know, ipods i mean anything they can get their hands on they uh, may have commuted or, or may have had any types of communications in any way, shape, or form, from text to phone calls to social media and everything. And it, they even look into local libraries and things like that. Like anywhere there might be tech uh, around the area first. Again, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But once they establish, uh, say if they immediately know that there is one suspect in mind, They'll start down that trail first and try to figure out where that person has gone based upon the uh, the location uh, apps and the location storage that's within the person's phone. And then they'll see if there's any tech in and around that area because, you know, they always have to think like a criminal does. And there are many, many, many cases where people have, and I should say, suspects have been known to go to libraries and Internet cafes and things of that nature. So. By doing things that way, they will try to trace and gather any type of evidence as far as the Internet goes and social media communications and all that. And then getting into um, if they're looking for a child, they immediately at the same time start to rally up a group or, you know, as close as they can a group of people around them to actually start canvassing the area if they know it's uh you know critical or there's reason to believe that something bad may have happened or you know a child abduction and then obviously with the ch child abduction then you have the amber alert and whatnot but right it, it, again it, it i know i'm sorry i probably made that a little more complicated than i need to but uh, again there are simple basic steps that the detectives follow by but there are so many people involved that through each in particular department there are so many different job tasks that each and every single one of them have because it's not like it was right. back in the day when the internet had just come out and they only had a few people that did it back then you know it's not like everybody i, I can remember when right. the first cell phones came out and I, you know the old magnetic uh antenna on top of the truck <laughs> top and stuff so but nowadays everybody having a cell phone and being a bit tech savvy and well, obviously the investigators all either go to school or are trained uh, by their uh, respective departments and agencies so yeah it and it, it leads into um establishing the charges obviously once they find enough of the the, the evidence they can to get a suspect singled out then they really build the case as much as humanly possible and that's why in a way now hindsight being 2020 i'm a bit impressed with how they did it because of all the pressure that was on so many different agencies and so many different departments you know they rarely ever broke like they still gave statements right and that kind of thing but as we all learned there was a lot that they didn't really release and there still is like i said rounding it back into that we're pretty much where i started there's still so much more that they have and so now you know uh once they've gathered up enough for the the arrests or the arrest warrant and whatnot then obviously they keep on looking into it after they take the individual into custody and at the same time, this is that's why looking into Tisha's past and anybody that may have passed away while she has been in any area may even come into play. I mean, they're not going to leave any stone unturned on this one. I can I can guarantee you. That. Right. I, I hope I really do hope that the I, I know the FBI has amazing intel. I hope to the, they get to the bottom of her identity oh, um, because I. I don't know this for a fact. I do not know this for a fact. Speaking as a person who I, I I'm tired. I'm not even going to start continue to clarify clarify myself on this. And I'm, a person, I'm a person who has opinions. So speaking <laughs> as a person who has opinions, personally would not be surprised if we find out that she has <laughs> falsified some things like social security cards her name because there are way too many aliases and to this day to this day i cannot find a birth certificate on her 
Hmm. But I can find one on all of her siblings. Something's not right. I don't know what it is, but I I get the impression that she has lived a life that has been very fraudulent. Hmm. Um, when, when you put all these little pieces together, from sh- being on a sugar daddy site to having these different teaching licenses and different names with different birth dates. Something's not right there. I don't know what it is. And I I just really think that we're going to see, I think that everybody's going to be shocked at what we do learn about her. That's, you know, what I believe at this time. Um, Yvette up there had a good question. And this is a question that I actually, we talked about this last night amongst the real massacre talk team. Yvette said, I have a question. Do you know if T flew or drove to South Carolina a month ago? So I was told a month ago that she was in South Carolina Hmm. by somebody who's very close to the investigation. And we just kind of never really said it. She's actually a sub here on my channel. And... I was told that she was there. I don't know how she got there. And I've questioned that. We've all questioned it because that comes into play because Tisha left so soon after Gannon's disappearance. And you have to wonder if she drove and if there is a possibility that Gannon is maybe not in Colorado. Mm. It could be. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Oh, but they will look. Uh, into yeah, and uh, you know that's total speculation. If that's something that she did, it's a, it's a harsh thing to. You keep laughing at me saying that. It's a it's a harsh thing to say, mm-hmm. but I I think it's something that needs to be considered. But, but actually, I I respectfully disagree. Though I don't think it, it's it's uh, any bit disrespectful. Or any it's in any way, shape, or form harsh, because again. With a woman that's had up to 10 aliases, okay, there is nothing that she would not do, would for that matter, would or wouldn't do to keep her butt out of trouble. And we can all now, again, hindsight being 2020, we all know that she did everything in her power to divert, to deflect, and try to throw any blockade or barrier that she could up in the way of all law enforcement, but simultaneously trying to to get the sympathy of the public and of everybody else around her. Oh, me, 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 believe me, believe me, because the cops are the big bad meanies and let's all hate cops because cops do this, cops do that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. All right. That's just like some of the abuse cases I hear and and like some of the shooting statistics and all that. Let let me tell you something about a a police officer, okay? You literally have uh, more, there's a a higher likelihood of you being struck by lightning three times in a row. And this is a fact. Go to the Fed website. You can find it out. Statistical and even uh, non-Fed sites, you'll find this out. But you are three times more likely, actually, I'm sorry, it's like 10 times more likely to be struck by lightning three times in a row than you are to be gunned down while being innocent by a police officer. Fact. I mean, yes, of course, when we see one that is up to no good, everybody casts a bad, you know, stink over it and they just drag them and all that stuff. But let me tell you something. I know hundreds, maybe into thousands of officers or I have met them, or I've spoken with them. There were some that grew up around me and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, they're some of the best men and women that I have ever known in my life. And some of the, the, the biggest family oriented and loving types of, of people. And that's why it, it aggravates me sometimes. I, I hear all, all this, this crap that comes out about, you know, facts get twisted up. I see some of these clowns on Twitter and all that. Yeah. This girl got pulled over and she was bed, bed. Yeah. Just stop. Just stop. And then you get the body cam footage. that gets released. And none of that was true. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go down a different route there. But back to good old T. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I just, you know, when somebody's trying to cover up a crime, they will go to all lengths. That exactly. Yep. Do I have the statistics and research in front of me? I don't. But I know just from following a lot of cases for many, many years, 
um, it's not uncommon for somebody that has committed murder to move the, their murder victim's body. If you look at the case of, of Savannah Spurlock, um, she was missing for months. And I don't know all the details on that case. So if I get it wrong, I'm sorry. But I, I do believe that the location that she was eventually found in was searched. And then however many months later, I want to say it was like six months later, she was found buried on that same property. So, you know, somebody who commits murder will do things like that. And if you're fleeing a state, and I have no problem calling it, calling it fleeing a state because she had committed a crime when she left the state of Colorado. And those crimes we've already went over. I mean, you know, first degree murders, that's what she's accused of. And the child abuse and tampering with one of her charges is tampering with a human corpse. And another, char the other charge is tampering. You just have what brought those charges. Sorry you about know. that. My laptop uh, powered down while you were talking. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. I, sc I scattered for the cord real quick. Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with what you said. And there are just there's so many people out there that are, are just trying to, for some reason, like back this woman in, in many ways. I just don't get it. I, I, it really it dumbfounds me. And I know there's a lot of people that have started piping down. No, after she was arrested, but still, how could you possibly even still try to think that she is in the least bit innocent? That just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. Right. <laughs> right. Did anybody in the chat, did you follow the case of Savannah Spurlock by chance? Who's breaking up? Me? It I'm, might be me. I'm breaking up. Oh, it's probably me. All right, I'll come right back if I'm breaking up. It's me, they're saying. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, okay, I, I got no, yes. Sounds better now, Doodlebug. Okay. I'll just go ahead and leave and come right back. That okay. way we don't have to worry about it. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Hi, Janelle King. Sorry, I missed your uh, I missed your uh, comment there earlier. I missed a lot of people's comments, of course. But yeah, so back to uh, what I was saying a bit ago. There's just there's no way that anybody at this point could say anything uh, that concerns T and that other big old word innocence. It just is not going to happen. I'm sorry. The police would not make such a mistake. The investigators and everybody this included would not have gone through all that they have. And then to bring this woman in on all of these charges, because if they were to lose on these charges, then yeah, no, they just trust me. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that at all. And that's why it took as long as it did. And thank God, thank God they did. So I am grateful. Oh, hello, Danielle. Hey there, I'm back. I'm back. So I don't know if anybody you heard me about that. the Savannah. Good. The Savannah Spurlock case. But I believe that is the. Most recent case I can think of. Didn't he? Okay. So Doreen saying she followed Savannah. Eyes are blue. Followed Savannah. That case didn't. Wasn't it determined that the man accused of her murder. Um, put her body there sometime later, well after her murder and after his fam his dad's property had just been searched. Not that I not that it matters. I just I'm trying to give an example, and that's the closest one I can come to of thinking off the top of my head that um 
you know, it is it is something that people who commit murder sometimes do. So oh, I'm right. not. You are 100 percent right. That actually happens even probably more than any of us know. I, I used to hear right. that at all the time. And and if not, you know, yeah. they've been known to put bodies in, in ice chests and all that stuff and sometimes try to wait it out. There's been cases where, you know, somebody is, is passed away in their home and they end up finding a body in their, their freezer. It's crazy. Right. You know, they're buried in the basement. Thank, thank you, true crime enthusiast. And Kim, you know, I'm going to do this with all respect. You're not welcome here anymore. I just, I can't. We know that he's, we, we know that. So, anyways. <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's a such thing as having a bit of empathy and compassion. You're not saying that you're totally lack yep. or void thereof, but you could watch and mind your words just a little bit better, especially since we've known to have Marie mm -hmm. in here a lot. <laughs> That'd be a yeah. Good thing. Very good thing. Yeah. So. Oh, what is this? Even taking lives in combat and thinking the enemy's lives lost was a terrible thing to me. Oh, your mind can't comprehend this case at all, Musty. I get it. it. Yeah, true crime enthusiast. Savannah was buried in a very shallow grave. Oh, thank you, Doodlebug. I figured you'd get her, but... My Lord, I just can't. And I'm not a mean person. I'm not, I'm not. But um, anyways. Only until you go into mama bear mode where you got to protect your room. That's for sure. That's the only time. Yeah. But even yeah. then, that's not out of mean. It's just, that's uh, called being defensive. That's all. Right. Oh, and Glowing Ember, I don't know that I heard too much about that. To be honest, I was quite busy today but um oh and late yesterday but about the uh t claiming uh, she has an attorney and thought that south carolina court would contact him for her yeah i don't know too much about that but i didn't I she knew. say her her friend lauren was supposed to contact an attorney for her mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i i just know that once she has been read miranda at that point, she is um, um, she's entitled to have a lawyer. And obviously, as Miranda usually says itself, or that the government would provide one or state would provide one for her. Um, so she could uh, immediately request a, a public defender and of which they would be legally uh, uh, they would be uh, responsible to do so. So if she had said, you know, lawyer, I mean, it, yeah, she could keep talking and, and they would ask her multiple times if she wanted a lawyer if she said no then they don't have to make her take one it's not like that now of course when she would go up in front of the judge the first time obviously the judge would you know read everything out for her and explain her rights to her and then give her that option you know everybody's entitled to uh, represent themselves within a court of law but i mean you know yeah so oh, it, thank you so much matt thank you oh, Matt's that's the so man. kind of you Matt is the man. So kind of you. He said something made me uh, look twice earlier. He looked up to me. I was like, no, no, no. I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I totally appreciated that. Totally. That was a very, very good and kind comment. Yeah, the judge did put her in her place. I was going to try to play that. Oh, I really I wish I had caught that. That's the only thing I didn't catch. Yeah. Before. I haven't for some, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to get it. I'm going to try to get it up here. Oh, don't you go messing anything up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give it a try. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah, and God bless you, Matt. Really. That is so, so appreciated. Heck, that's yeah, your own. Yeah. Isn't it? Thank oh, you. Wow. Nice. As I always forget what the euro is to the American dollar. Isn't it like, to, like a, one and a half times or two times, uh, one and something a half times. I can't remember. I'm not sure. Pretty much. No, either way, it's very appreciated. And yeah, I it's very it's much appreciated. You have no idea. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank she's, hitting, she's hitting Taco Bell for sure. Just noted. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sitting here talking almost like it's a Friday, but it kind of feels that way to me, just knowing that that witch is in jail. It, it, uh, it, uh, it brings a little bit of uh, Just looking at her face, oh. looking at her face, I cannot. <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh. <laughs> That's like calling for the candy man or something. Oh, boy, that was like. When I first saw her face, it, it all made sense. And even you know, watching that first video uh, that you had played for me the very first time I was on your show, I was like, oh, it makes sense. And it really, it all flows together. It's all pure evil. <laughs> yeah. I, I can understand why she did that, though. You know, she probably was one of them self entitled types that felt like either somebody wasn't paying enough attention to her. And granted, yes, it may have stemmed from abuse. Okay, I get that. But let me tell you something for every evil person out there that's suffered abuse and all that, I knew 10 more that have suffered just as much as most anyone else has. And yet they're still good, productive, kind, purely loving human beings and productive members of society. So there's no excuse or rhyme or reason for right. somebody to turn to such a horrific level of evil as murder. And that to me is, there's no, and you can tell, obviously she messed up for a reason. Now we don't know at this time, whether she's done this before or not. I mean, let's be real here. They're still probably looking into a multitude of things. I mean, I've heard so many different podcasts where people have had some speculations and have put some actually relatively decent theories out there, but from her changing her name so much, obviously she's running from something, be it herself, be it her past actions, be it for others that are looking for her. I mean, and it could be a combination of all the above. And even more on top of that, we just don't know. We don't know. One thing I would like to point out, and I think anybody who lives in North Carolina, I honestly, I think this is maybe something that we should make a petition for as well. North Carolina does not fingerprint their, their teachers. Really? And she had a North Carolina teaching license. Wow. So maybe maybe uh, we can look into making a petition for that because huh. that's scary. That is, it is. utterly it is. frightening that this person who is accused of such brutal crimes against an 11-year-old little boy was in the position... Not long ago. I mean, it was just 2016 and 2017. Wow. She had an Alaska teaching license as well. She had a Colorado teaching license. I don't believe she ever taught in Colorado, but she still had the licenses. Um, but I do know that North Carolina does not require fingerprints. Well, I will. Get, and I think that's something that maybe we could bring awareness to as well. Because sure. Gannon has really, Gannon's case has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole abuse thing I went into earlier. Yes. Not that I, my eyes weren't open to that before, but I just, I've noticed it more so um, with his case and just different things surrounding his case. And, you know, they have the Gannon's Law petition right now that's going, and that is a great petition. And I think it would be a good thing. We, we have to stop these people that are a danger to children before they're allowed to be in contact with them. And Tisha had violent, con she has violent convictions on her record. Yeah. And that would have automatically excluded her through any board of education or any licensing uh, establishment anywhere right. here on the East Coast. But if I may play devil's advocate for a minute and actually. Of course, in, of course. This is more so, and I believe, I know I've said it more than a few times, and I believe you you have as well. But, um, you know, it, it's it, in a way, you know, Gannon obviously leaves a, a good list of lessons behind. And I can even almost hear him darn near saying to learn from this, learn from this. And we are. I mean, in, in the case of some of these, uh, some of these school districts, not fingerprinting uh you know yes absolutely they should and there's no second guess about that they should have a, a full uh, criminal background check or you know a homeland security uh 
background check, which usually includes 10 to 15 years worth of anybody's life. I mean, usually like if you work on a military base or you're a private contractor or you do uh, even handicap accessibility work and stuff like that, there's a lot of different situations where you have to go through that kind of background check in order to work for major corporations and stuff like that. So you think about it that way, if contractors need to do that, I mean, why wouldn't the people that we trust to teach our children not be mandated to do that even first? You know what I mean? This is just a bunch of guys out on the job site or on a military base that need to go through these kinds of things that fully includes the fingerprint identification part of it. And then it also includes, again, like I said, between 10 to 15 years worth of a background check, everything from family members to where they've worked, their total work history. So it, Sorry, I thought I heard another voice and looked down and my phone was on. I'm like, where the heck are you talking? Oh. <laughs> but so, no, they might have been behind. And I'm not going to put too much of my stuff out there, but I will say that North Carolina part is very concerning to me because this is a more than a couple of decades ago. I've had some uh, close individuals to me that went to school in Carolina. Let me interrupt you. You probably did hear a voice. That's because my son is talking. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's probably the voice that you're hearing. Oh, hello. I actually no. I was pretty sure. Cause I think it was like, for some reason I hit on another link and it took me to some mop commercial and he knows oh. one of them. Uh, if you buy it now, screaming into the mic types. Yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but that's my luck. That's what that is. So no, I, Eva. I, so go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to finish by saying I, I totally agree, and I think you are 100 percent correct. You and everybody has learned something new from and by all this, and to fingerprint or or at least start a petition to mandate, you know, maybe even put it within the the uh, federal uh, mandates. That all teachers everywhere should be done. Now I, they can't say that it costs all that much anymore because let's face it every police station or almost every police station around the world now has mostly upgraded to the digital fingerprint identification system right. i think it's like corrections facilities and all most of them are still using the traditional ink but then again you know a lot of them are also privatized but so there's really not too much of an excuse for a teacher or a person who would be willing to become a teacher would have to travel to their local police department and have their fingerprints put into the system. And so I right. think that's a, that's a very, very good thing. And I can't say shame on them because, like I said, I mean, as much as it – for as advanced as we think we all are, because now we're all carrying around, you know, iPhones and, you know, Macintosh and Windows software, all this different kind of stuff. And these, these portable small tablets and laptops and everything else, you know, there still are many areas of life that still do have a lot of catching up to do. But then again, look how far we've come just in the past 30 years. I mean, I can remember 30 years ago, there was no internet. There was barely no cell phones. We were counting around pagers and thought we were kings of the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. <No>. Right. <laughs> hold on one more second. Jason, I do want to um address your comment, but hold on one second, guys. For I'll be back sure. in 30 seconds. Oh, you okay. Okay. So how accurate does everyone think on disputed truth card reading? Right, again. Okay, well, I won't speak for Danielle, but I'll say that I, I know um some of these card readings and some of the other insightful uh podcasts that I've listened to uh have some you know relevance to them really do but then again you know when i growing up i've i knew a lot of cherokee and some other uh you know tribes so to speak mostly because they used to have all kinds of demonstrations and all that one of them was a very very close family friend or a member of one of those was a very close family friend and i grew up believing in the spirit world i grew up in believing in people that had uh extraordinary abilities that had uh, some kind of contact or were able to read into things that uh, a lot of others couldn't uh, i mean in, i mean it's written all throughout history that there is a long uh, well it's written history that there are have always been seers you know through soothsayers and all of those types it was as far back as the egyptian days and the roman days so i mean personally i i believe you know in those kinds of things but i do also believe that there are, are a lot of people out there that try to use that and they abuse it at the same time where you know you get a lot of people that fake it but likewise, so what I wanted wanted to touch on with the 
undisputed truth thing. I re I have a lot of respect for her channel and every creator has a right to do their channel, you know, operate their channel, however they see fit. And I will I never ever criticize anything. I think there is a lot of accuracy to her cards, but there's a different point I want to make here. I was openly accused of unfair speculation Oh. And I actually resent that statement because if I was unfairly speculating against people, I would have been speculating against every single name that was pulled in Undisputed Truth's final videos. Hmm. And I didn't do that because there was no reason for me to do that. I knew the facts that I had in front of me and that had been pulled from research and from multiple sources. So that's what I would consider unfair speculation on my part. You know, if I would have taken somebody else's suggestions and I think there's a, I think she's, there's a reason that she has those names. I don't know what those, what that is. I think she's very, very credible. I think she is a great resource. And I do think that her readings are very accurate. I think that those readings have to be interpreted at whatever level you want to interpret them. Like, I think one of the cards that kept coming up was, was sex trafficking and child molestation. And you have to remember when readings are done, energies can come from different sources, you know? True. Um, and one thing I had spoken about, one thing I had spoken about is that we had found out that Al's father did have a, a you know, a, a sex offender conviction. So that, that part, that could be an energy from that. And he's in no way around, it wasn't around Ganon whatsoever. Do you know what I'm saying? Hmm. So that, that part that came up in her readings could be from that. Or I think there was a, or then you have to think about the fact that Tisha was on the, the whole sugar daddy site. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff came up in her cards about schools and education. And Tisha had multiple teaching licenses all over the place. Um, so I think a lot, a lot of what Undisputed Truth says is accurate. I have never seen her be inaccurate in a case as far as I followed her. Um, uh, thank you, Joni. Thank you. So I def definitely have to do a little more research before I'd speak about her, but it, or, it, or their channel, it, but it sounds like, uh, you know, again, I have no reason to not have faith in what this person has said or anything that has been done thus far and obviously if you vouch for her or if you think she's uh this person is credible then i have no reason to yeah do, that's for sure yeah and you know i'm not saying that anybody has to believe her i think we all have a right to what we believe and don't believe when it comes to those sort of things you know when it comes to psychics or tarot cards or mediums any of that you know it's it's all about what you're open to but I personally just have never seen her be wrong in the cupcake McKinney. Her name is actually Camille Camille McKinney, but she went by cupcake. The very first card that she pulled when, when cupcake was still missing was the card trash. And then she did another reading on her before she was found. And then what do you know? A few days later, Cupcake McKinney was found inside of a dumpster. Dump? Oh. Or, or she had been put into a dumpster and taken to the landfill. She was found at the oh, landfill. Wow. Um, oh, and then in the... <laughs> oh, you don't have to be sorry, Tammy. You don't have to be sorry. I think we all have a right to what, you know, what you believe and what you don't. Um, that just gave me chills, you saying that. That's another you know example that I can give just off the top of my head is in the Heidi Broussard case, you know, Undisputed Truth did several readings on Heidi and she kept pulling the same cards, you know, and they related to envy 
and envy over one's worldly possessions, which could be children. And what, you know, what do, what do you find out? You find out that Heidi's best friend kidnapped her, killed her, and wanted her baby. You know, so it's, I've seen her be accurate in many, in every case that I've followed her on. Um, and I've never seen her do as many readings as she has done on Gannon's case. So you'll have to check her out. It's very interesting. Another thing to note, if, if you notice the, in Gannon's readings, Park kept coming out in all of his readings. Park. The area mm -hmm. that they were searching over by Palmer Lake, the road had the word park in it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot that... Well, yeah, from, I think she's good, too. From good what too, I've understood... Tarver. From what I've understood about a lot of those card readings and even a lot of, uh, say, seance sessions and things of that nature is, you know, there really is no definitive or bottom line, uh, say, pull of a card or a sense or a feeling. You know, a lot of it, not only do some of these people have to uh, receive these energies, but at the same time, then they have to be able to translate them properly because it's not only, it's like these people that are, are uh, starting to utilize some of these spirit boxes and things of that nature, trying to utilize, you know, the technology of the day right. to do those kinds of things. I mean, there's just so many different uh, ways of, of translation and, and granted, you know, all of us, I mean, every person or anybody, in life in general is going to make mistakes with anything that we do. So with these or those that have gifts or have uh, some kind of spiritual intuition, you know, there are always going to be uh, mistakes that are made. And that's why most of them that I've ever heard that have done cards or have done readings, uh, most of them will usually say, this is not a hundred percent foolproof. And, you know, they'll go down the list of things before they usually begin. But again, you can usually learn a lot by watching them. And granted, again, yes, I know there's a, more than their fair share of, of frauds and stuff like that out there. But again, I truly believe that, that things like that are possible. Yeah, I mean, look at where we are yeah. today. There's, there's such a divide between you know those that believe in heaven and hell and those that don't. And you know, there's so much that we don't know. And even today, that we're learning all the time. I mean, I can remember when I was back in school, and they used to tell us that human civilization really didn't start until five or eight thousand years ago. And now we're finding ruins off the Japanese coast that are over two hundred and fifty thousand years old, with perfect ninety degree cuts in solid stone. Right. So come on, I mean, right. you know I mean, so things are undone all the time. So the point is, we just we're learning more and more uh, every day. And if our technology says anything about how far we've come, I mean, what's going to happen within the next, you know, two, four, six, eight, twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred years? I mean, I'm excited to see where we'd be, and likewise, I'd be excited to see where a lot of those readers and card readers and you know. The, all the people that are into that kind of thing uh, with their gifts, I, I'm more than curious to see where they might be. You know, and plus there's a such thing as right. the Schumann resonance that all the Schumann resonance, excuse me, that weighs on our uh, actual emotions. If anybody doesn't know of what the Schumann resonance is, definitely uh, Google it, look into it. It's actually quite fascinating. Uh, if it's, uh, I believe it's, it's super high. We're, uh, we're, usually more active and happy and all that. But if it's at a super low level, you know, a lot of people, and it's been proven too, there's been a lot of uh, independent research studies done uh, all over the place that, that prove it, it when it's very, very low and then people are sad and, and, and angry and things of that nature. So again, I say, you know, for as much as we think we know, there's so much more that we don't. And that's why I don't doubt some of those that I, I truly believe have those types of gifts. Usually, I can just read in the right and, and their eyes and their micro macro expressions to be able to tell that they're not trying to BS with me or whatnot, you know. right? Um, I, I just want to be clear though, when I said that about true helper pulling different names, I'm not criticizing her for that at all. I'm not, she does her own thing, and um, you know, that's 
she's following her intuition and how she does her readings and her, her card. So I did, I don't, I want to be clear that I, because I'm not, I was saying that if I was somebody who just openly and irresponsibly speculated falsely on people, I could have ran with every one of those names. Oh, absolutely. That, that seen, was my point. I've I seen mean, more than a few channels that have done that too. And that's why I have the amount of respect that I do for you and Amy and even everybody I've met in chat. You know, the one thing that is most consistent here is transparency is loyalty and love and honor and respect. I mean, all of those, all of the good things, the good words. And I believe I said it when I first come into chat earlier, you know, I had had a really crappy, miserable morning, but some of the few times that I had actually felt uh, so much better was obviously, you know, we, uh, we were speaking earlier and then obviously they come in here and, and well, of course, you know, little lady got home and all that, but you, you get what I'm saying. Coming here, you know, there's so much positivity, so much you know, good vibes, so many good people all in one place. But unfortunately, on the flip side, there are so many other channels and so many other groups of people out there that are just looking to hate for any reason they can. And they'll take one sentence that we say and twist it up and make us look like we're something that we're not just for whatever their end game is. This makes no sense to me, but oh, well, whatever. It's America and they can do whatever they want or for even from wherever they're at. Right. Um, yeah, I'm personally not the YouTube police. Nope. I, I don't take it into my own hands to go and do that to other people. <laughs> you already have your own kids that you're presently raising. You don't Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Hold on one second. Sure. <laughs> sure. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Doodlebug, thank you for posting that. Signing the uh, petition for Gannon's Law. That is uh, absolutely excellent. I haven't checked in on the numbers lately, but I, I know that it's been getting more and more attention. And I feel that everybody, I mean, please don't just stop at being on the Internet or seeing somebody in chat or even in another chat or you know, uh, even being out and about, I mean, tell your family, tell your friends, tell everybody. And then a simple explanation as to why would suffice. And obviously we all know why this was heartbreaking enough. So I knew that would be another lesson that, uh, again, would definitely want us all to do. And if for nothing else, just by all of us being here, I feel like we, we owe it to him. It's such a good thing to do on top of all that. Blonde PT, uh, do I make videos? Not yet, and I'm glad you brought that up. I do apologize to everybody. I know I said that I was going to be going live at the start of March, but unfortunately, well, excuse me, I take that back. Not unfortunately. But because uh, pretty much at last second, I had more than a few cases of missing persons thrown um, uh, or given to me, it kind of redirected my attention and what I was doing and not to mention some things at home and on top of it all. I mean, learning for this YouTube thing, I tell you, you've got to be an all, uh, all knowing or not all knowing, but you know what I mean? A well-rounded individual who studies up a bit about editing and learning the ins and outs. It, it, it takes a lot. So that's why I've been a bit behind schedule here lately. Uh, I promise everyone that I am doing my very best and I'm not here to promote myself. Of course, absolutely not. And most of you will know I never come in here saying, oh, hey, I'm starting a channel. Look at me. No, no, that's not my game. First of all, I have way too much respect for Danielle. And then, of course, I have self-respect, too. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be that way. But but thank you for asking that. And I'm going to try to stick with the end of this month at latest April because I'm, I'm really I'm really wanting to because there's a lot that I know that I could share and then would even be better at collaborating with, say, Danielle, and, you know, even some other guys. There's so much that I'd love to bring forward. But right now, between not being able to show my uh, my old fugly mug and uh, not being able to do this the proper way or in from my point of view i just i'd like to be a little more transparent than just yeah 
I know I have a lot or some people out there that have said, oh, why do you have to hide? It's it's not about hiding. You know, everybody has to take some preventative measures when you do get online because you don't want anybody, you know, trying to swat you or do some nasty stuff. Oh, is Amy here? Is my girl? Oh, hi, Amy. Amy. Where are you? You, you, What are you doing? (laughs) Hmm. And there I was again, slacking on chat. I'll tell you. No, you you're good. You're good. Um, oh, stop pandering to me. You even got to. Tr- <laughs> yeah, I did. I promise I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> I always feel bad at the end of every show because I know there's been a bunch of people that have said hello or somebody has asked me one question or more than once. And then I'm like, oh, I watched the replay and I'm just thinking, oh. I'm surprised everybody even still thinks of me, <laughs> or anybody does. <laughs> oh, look at that pup, Sparta. That's a good-looking pup there. Is that a shepherd mix? Looks like a, a husky, maybe. No, Hus- maybe a husky mix. It looks like two different eyes. No, I can't see the other eye color. Oh, oh that's gone. <laughs> Poem that lives in Aussie. Oh, Australia, huh? Tracy Walker? Oh, a, oh, a bunch of prayers towards you and yours, without a doubt, after all those fires that y'all went through. And, oh, boy, uh, yeah, my little lady and I, we've been following that since it started so long ago. And, and just the amount of damage that has been done to your beautiful country, it just it tears me apart. Tears me apart. Hmm. And all them little koalas. Oh, hey, Sharma Lily. Oh, hello. Amy, if you if you decide you want to come on, you're more than welcome to. I love collaborating with you. Janelle Keen, uh, if I had a ladder later, you're my age, L O L. Am I not understanding that, Danielle? I'm not sure. What? What did uh, she say? I'm sorry. Janelle Keen asked uh, tr- or said, True Helper, if you had a ladder or later, I keep saying ladder. I mean, True Helper, if you had a later, you're my age, lol. I don't know what that means. And I know I'm not quite tech savvy. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to scroll up and find out I'm a little behind on the chat. Um, hanging does. with your homies, Amy. <laughs> That shows how much further behind that I am because I'm still way up there. And I also yeah. keep hitting random comments and putting them on the screen. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's deck. Again, that shows how you can multitask. And here I'm stuck on just scrolling up little by little. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see the comment. I'll find it though. Oh, Sparta China, said China cat, sunflower. What does that mean? Why do so many people have more than one. One. Um, I don't understand. Why do so many people have more than one character? Well, I don't know. Oh, um, maybe. Joni. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you're fine. You're fine. I'll, I'll get it. You're fine. Go ahead. Maybe uh, you might want to. You might know the answer to that question well, that I, I just was said. Trying to find it, but if it's what I think it is, it means why uh, people have multiple personas being online. Well, that's that's kind of an easy one because obviously they want to have some anonymity and not put themselves out there to a possibility of being swatted or whatever else. But why would have somebody? Mul- excuse me. Why would somebody have multiple identities? Say out in the real world or out in life. It's again, as I said earlier, obviously either running from somebody or something or a certain state or anything else. I mean, I've, well, being a sponsor, I've actually had sponsees or, or, you know, people, recovering addicts and whatnot 
they have been through that same kind of thing where they've lived in one state for a few years, burn all their bridges, then, you know, move to another, change their, you know, try to change their identity as much as humanly possible. Now, granted, it's a bit harder in today's day and age because now every time, you know, you go to a DMV or something like that, you got to show six to eight forms of identification and all that good stuff. And it's not like it used to be back in the day where you could literally go online and do a couple clicks or, you know, simply mail uh, a, uh, a renewal form in. And I know now you have to actually go in and renew it in person in most states nowadays. But so I hope that covered uh, or that answered that question. But I didn't know which in which respect she meant either in real life or online. Right, right. Um, but that would, that would I'm just I, ha I have a hard time understanding that with people as well i guess and i it's just because what you with me what you see is what you get um so when that's not how it is with other people i i i'm like hmm you know it, it causes me just some confusion but um i'm just trying to read some comments because i've been really behind on comments I, it's funny as you said that i was i was doing the same thing just scrolling up but yeah and it, i'm still trying to get t's video guys i promise I'm, that's okay that's okay but i mean take the time don't you know you don't i wasn't to, really prepared before i tell you I, I was listening earlier before i came on and i know you've been you've been doing an excellent job as as you always do and i'm not just saying that to try to flatter you or anything else but trust me i know the difference between a good podcast and a bad podcast lord knows i've moderated for oof, more than a couple of dozen channels and <laughs> i do know the difference i've seen it time and time again but... right oh, what you got chips over there Oh, just helping my 16 year old with yeah. some good old ramen, ramen noodles. Oh, because nice. he, ramen noodles. He can't eat anything. Yeah. He had all four of his teeth cut out today. And Ooh. ouch. He's a little crabby because, oh. you know, he he's a football player. And, uh, um, yeah. And, Compacted you know, he, or just needed to uh, for for uh, braces or something like that or for preparation thereof. Just because they were they were starting to come in and they were going to come in underneath his primary teeth, so uh, yeah. he had yeah, to have his wisdom yeah. teeth out just for yeah. preventative problems in the future or preventing problems in the future. And um, and that's yeah, how so they also yeah. know you're a good mom. He's not feeling so well. He's very crabby tonight, understandably. He's giving me some dirty looks. Yeah, so I could play like, you guys. Stop talking to all <laughs> that. Would you give me my stinking ramen already? <laughs> yeah, he uh I think my mods are all on my Facebook down there and got to see his video today of his anesthesia behavior. It was pretty hilarious. Uh, is he one of the talkers? Like when he gets you get all oh he was a, he was a talker, all right. He was he oh. was talking. This is why I gotta you know, I've <laughs> really been I gotta get it back. I gotta get Facebook back. <laughs> yeah, it's I can I might be able to send it to you. It's funny. Yeah, I think now I know as of like a few years ago, it used yeah, to be uh, you couldn't click on the videos and watch them. But I think now, and especially while upgrading the phone to the XR 11 or whatever the heck this thing is, I think I can actually watch videos from Facebook now. So that would be awesome. Oh, but nice. Donny Color. I just. Donny Color, thank you for that. She signed the petition, it seems. Again, oh, good. Good job, guys. Doodlebug has been post Doodlebug's been posting that uh, a lot tonight. Excellent. Excellent. I I'm going to have T video in just a second. So. I'm sorry. Every time I feel like I'm stepping on you, I think there might be a little. No, lag we're fine. On my computer. It's all right. You can just, just say it. You know, just, just shut it. <laughs> Amy, we're just chit chatting now. We went over quite a few things earlier. Um, 
You didn't get to watch it yet either, Joe. Well, I have it coming. It's coming. Oh, what? But so we live in Northern Colorado, about two hours from what Colorado name? Springs. This is just heartbreaking. Yeah. Rest in paradise, Kenneth. Oh, thank you, Heidi. Is that uh, Bertrand Chatham? 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 Sorry, I'm horrible with last names at times. Oh. Danette, I have the most amazing mods on here. Oh, I said they are. They are amazing. Hi, hybrid prices. Always a pleasure. Always. Oh, you know what? Aw, good, Lori. I'm glad you requested to join. We'll be happy to see you in there for sure. Oh, you know what? I did have something about uh, the whole the interview part of uh, well, when you played the uh, the audio from that the interview that mm -hmm. T had. You know, that just that whole cover story. You know, the more and more I think about, it, you know, she really must have been thinking about this for quite some time. And the reason why I know that for a fact is, if okay, let's just let me just say say if I didn't have any experience with reading micro and macro expressions or didn't know anything about body language or didn't know anything about verbology or you know the way that uh, people use left right side thinking and all that stuff and the way that people articulate certain uh, thoughts and how they compose sentence and the way that they structure them and you know i wouldn't be able to say the things that i'm about to and that is to me it would appear that she has been thinking about this for a very long time because the way that she has it all played and laid out it's just so obvious, but the her catch-all or what caught, got her caught up was she kept using past tense. Like I know she was using was and were, and things of that nature, and I just mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. well. And she said one of the things that she said is, "I just want Gannon to come home to his family." Mm -hmm. She totally removed herself yep. as being part of his family. Um, yes. <laughs> already separate herself trying to almost you know psychologically trying to get away from him because she knows what she did and the, the probably the horrific nature of it will haunt her it's not to say she's without total conscience but obviously you know she lacks almost all of it but yeah a lot of criminals will do that and it'll show and that's right. why it's like body detector tests and body language specialists and all that can see the, and, and they can test for these types of things because again as as well as people think they can lie there are always tells there's always nervous ticks there's always different positions in, and again especially with our speech you know, people you know, stuttering and mumbling or pausing or using us or ums all the time especially when they're under the pressure of a camera face mm -hmm. you know, put the face and or especially when officers that's why they do what they do that's that's kind of investigations class want you know 101 where they'll both you know want to play good cop the other bad cop and they'll just keep the pressure on and, and over time that's why people end up snapping because well there's only so long that a, a person's brain can hold out until that is the first thing to give and then the body obviously follows suit which was shown in in her good old interview right. yeah <laughs> right yeah. Okay, okay, so I think I have to play it. Oh, yes. Should be able to play All it. All right. Mm, okay. Should be coming up in just one second. Oh, Glowing Ember, I was on DWOP's channel, but I had a mask on, so maybe you could have semi-seen my outline. Maybe my eyes, but... Obviously not my face, <laughs> or at least I would hope not. Oh dear Lord! Oh boy! I watch. Oh, I'll probably okay. still get a call after this because I'm sure one of them's listening in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got the video, so let me get this played. Sweet. All right. Oh. 
Hold on, guys. I got to share my screen, screen, and then I think I have to mute myself like I did earlier. I have to get this. Gina, Sina, thank you for that. Cha them, cha them, cha them. I'll probably still per mispronounce them. <laughs> but th thank you for laying that out for me. It it's truly appreciated. I'm being honest when I say that. All right. Let me get this shared, and then we'll probably be wrapping it up pretty soon after that. Yeah, anytime you're you're ready, you just tell me. Just tell me to uh, shove off. I'll be. Oh, no, you're fine. I just. <laughs> I know. I'm okay, I'm gonna mute my mic. Hopefully, that is what I need to do. So, oh, okay. here we go. I will write. It's coming. It's coming. There we go. I I see the pinwheel of doom. Oh, there she is. Oh, 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 that face. I'd say only a mother could love, but oh boy. I don't know. I doubt that one. Mm. There she is. Whew. Wow, now this is a first of me, so I'm going to be able to see all of her little ticks and oh dang it! Tell me it's not all this type of video. Hmm. Well, she's definitely not camera shy. I can tell you that much. So. Hmm. Oh, no, no, darling. You keep looking at the screen. Thank you. Hmm. Danielle, I don't know if this is supposed to have audio because we're not hearing anything. To be quite honest, about oh, there we go. The facts of this particular situation, I have a feeling it's maybe too much short. Anyway, you have 20, have 20 days to come get you, or you can fight extradition. Fighting extradition. I was going to say, Danielle, it's kind of skipping in the audio, so maybe it's eating up your bandwidth or something. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, hold on. Can hard. tell me. Yeah, tell me if you can hear it now. That's uh, a negative. Oh, no, yeah. It's this is a guess to admit on my part that it would be about maybe. Can you guys okay, hear yeah, it's it fine. now? Yeah, it's fine. Now the Attorney General from the state of South Carolina would hold a uh, extradition hearing. Okay, you have sound now. So you are missing. Yes. Uh, staunch. Okay, uh, I don't know about. That. Okay, we're gonna hold on. What are you gonna learn? Uh, this morning, you have a decision. Can eat. And <laughs> the uh, state has uh, 20 days to under the facts of this. Oh. Just so everybody knows, the of this video was poor. Where? Um, the new states of them that I saw, and it, it's mm. I mean, I, it was actually um, yeah, it just might be the, video. how they, they read like a virtual um, what do you call, sentence judge. But I'm gonna share it and then do yeah, it how okay. I did it earlier. So hopefully you have. Some. Yeah, okay. the video no, will okay. everyone that okay. pretty much poor quality. So I'm just gonna share. You're doing fine. Share my entire screen, and I. think I think I have to mute myself when I do it this hmm. way. So, okay. into here.
forget you, which to be quite honest about it, in the fact situation, I had a feeling it'd be much shorter than that. It was planned and then it cut off. Yeah, there's, or at least I don't have any audio right now. No. Yeah. And everybody else is saying no, there's no sound. I can see the picture, but it's pretty pixelated. So I don't know if even if you wanted to maybe try leaving again and coming back and refresh it that way. Is this Miss uh, Stunt? I knew. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much you know. Yeah, I totally can't be heard on cam. I don't know what the issue is, but anyways, to another day for that. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Can hear me okay, right? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, you sound okay now. Okay. Yeah, it was probably just eating up your bandwidth too at the same time. I know sometimes that happens when um, it could be. You know, they say I have the highest bandwidth there is, but I beg yeah. to differ. Well, <laughs> it mean, could be. I, it could be my computer too. I, I don't know. I was going to say I know uh, a few other people that I know were having some issues today, and it's only because uh, we've had some well blasting of our outer uh, stratosphere. So, yeah, or a magnetosphere, I should say. We got pelted by some uh, solar radiation, as they say. But anyway, so right. sometimes that interferes with signals and stuff as well. But that's a whole one other <laughs> topic. Right. Right. But, Danielle, I believe I will step off, and uh, this has been interesting, and I guess I'm going to <laughs> cause some havoc somewhere, and uh, actually probably play up my for a while, and <laughs> but at the same time, no, I, I am going to find that video and take a, and try to uh, see if I can even find... Uh, a, I can email it to you. I have it in my email. Oh, um, beautiful. Now, when that video actually plays, it is the video chopped up like that, or does it play fluidly to where you can see it in real time? Or is it just because I mean, I've you can you can see it in real time. It actually looked a great deal better on my screen than what you guys were seeing. Okay. So because I know it's so many pics per second or whatnot or whatever. I can't remember so many frames. That's what it is. So many frames per second. And sometimes like when they have those digital things between you know the judge and the correction facility, sometimes it will lag. I've seen that a hundred times over. But so right, I mean, right. It was like you know say watching the you know uh, a regular video of any kind. But that's just me. I'm all thumbs. I don't quite understand about it. You know what, Amanda? I'm gonna um if you don't mind, I'm gonna give you a wrench as well if you want one, as if you want one. Because you're so great at keeping up with information. But sorry to cut you off, True Helper. I'm kind of like in my own world here with oh, that's fine. You know me, I'm kind of in my own world too. I mean, how many times have you figured that yeah. out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm so thankful for you coming on, and well, thank you for having me. As thank always, you. it was great to speak with uh, you. I appreciate it so much. Yes, and thank you to everybody again. I, I can't express that enough. But I did. I did also. I did want. I had one last thing I'd like to say, and I know I've been a little tongue-tied sure. tonight. But I. This is from 
me to more than a few others out there in YouTube land, and you more than likely may know who you are, because as many creators know, I don't usually have bias or get involved in drama or anything like that. But shame on anybody who would try to talk crap on anybody involved in this channel, from Danielle to Amy to anybody that is uh, subscribed here or who has been within the live stream chat at all. You know, because I'll just say it like this everybody makes mistakes at times. And part of the human condition, as I'd like to refer to it as, is making mistakes at times. And people do have a case of foot and mouth. Lord knows I have 10 cases of those before I wake up out of bed in the morning. So I, I'm prone to making mistakes myself. However, to try to, to play games with other people's emotions, to, to get to some point or anything like that, or try to hold a simple brief moment in time over somebody's head for something they may have misspoke over or may have not gotten factually correct, or even if, say, a family member or something like that might have said something off. You know, just shame on you. That's all I got to say, because I know my mom raised me to be a real man. And in my book, real men don't play that kind of game. and They don't talk that kind of crap. And that's all I'm going to say on that. And I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to put that out no, there. No, thank I'm you. Very, I appreciate that. I'm I usually very that neutral, so much. but certain things usually piss me off. And there are uh, a lot of people that I follow that some people might even say like, whoa, what the heck? But I just want to be clear. Sometimes I do follow certain people. It's not because I like them. It's because I usually like to stay in the know about certain things. And you'd be mm -hmm. surprised how much you can learn. By well, another lesson my mom taught me growing up: if you listen to somebody long enough, you will understand everything you ever needed to know. And that's it. But again, Danielle, thank you so much for having me. Thank you to everybody in chat for always being so nice, kind, and supportive. And I know Gannon's family really enjoys the heck out of everything that has been done. And of course, I mean, there's been some differences here and there, but ultimately, overall, I just can't express it enough how just truly proud I am to and lucky that I, I found you guys, you know, when I did, I know I was late into all of this, but I'm just so blessed and I appreciate and I thank you so much, Danielle, for bringing me aboard like this. I really Aww, do. I'm honored to have you and thank you so much for the kind words and for the support and for being just a genuine true soul. And I honestly consider you a friend and I'm blessed to have crossed paths with you. I am thankful for that. You say you're close to either you know make me blush or cry one or the other. But I on that note, Aww. I'm gonna let you go <laughs> and thank you so much, my dear. And I will you have a great night. All right, thank you, and you too. God bless everybody. Thank you. All right, good night. Good night. Ah, isn't he amazing, guys? He's such a great soul. He really is. He just, yeah. Yeah, he he definitely holds a special place in my heart. He's become a dear friend of mine, and I'm thankful for him. And he has such great input, not only because of life experience and, you know, wisdom, but also because of his profession. You know, he doesn't just say things that aren't accurate. Oh, thank you. Amy is amazing too. Amy is an amazing soul. So everybody give Amy some love down in the chat too. She, she is one in a million, one in a million. Oh, I'm glad you feel love on here, Tammy. Thank you, Thursday's child. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> You're funny, Amy. I am going to wrap it up, guys. I've been on here two and a half hours, but show Amy lots of love. Light that chat up blue for Gannon. Um, you know, despite we discussed tonight, we still got to bring Gannon home. They still got to find him. I ask that you please keep one of the members of the Real Massacre, Massacre Talk team in your thoughts as she 
most likely will be out there in that field looking for him. Um, or in the field, I should say, as in searching. So, you know, that that's a hard thing for her. And that's emotional. It's, it's sad. And, you know, it, it just really leaves you speechless to know what, not only what Gannon's family is going through, I'm not trying to downplay that at all, because Gannon's family is going through living hell. But please remember the first responders and all law enforcement and all military effort that are involved in these searches and what they are facing in the upcoming days. Um, hopefully it's just days. It could be longer than days. But, you know, that's that's tremendously hard on the soul and on the spirit when you're searching for an 11 year old little boy and you know that when you're searching for him that you're looking for a a little boy that has been murdered. So always please, please keep them in your thoughts, prayers, good vibes, whatever you believe in, do your thing and send positivity their way. Uh, thank you, Jason. <laughs> thank you. On that note, guys, I'm going to talk, talk to you guys all later. I'm sure I'll be back on tomorrow. Um, and probably the next day and the next day and the next day if I want to, because that's the beauty of YouTube, isn't it? Um, but I need to go check on my 16-year-old and make sure that he's doing okay with his, his soup and see if he needs some hugs and love from mommy, even though he'll pretend that he doesn't want that because he's grown up now, he thinks, but... Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for all of your support, for all of the super chats. I am absolutely blown away. You, you all are just so supportive and loving, and I couldn't be more grateful for the platform here. Oh, yeah, Amy, he's a million bucks. I, I swear, you guys, I will show you the video. Remind me on the next live to show you my son's video from his how he was acting after surgery this morning. It, it, he was a riot. He was a riot. Thank you, Joni. But good night, everybody. I love you all. And thank you all so much for the support and positivity and for following us here at Real Massacre Talk. I will talk to you another night. Bye, guys.